Okay, so a lot of you had questions when we did our 200 plus hours off of the grid with just solar energy, and we're gonna go and kind of do a Q&A. One of the first questions though that I wanted to respond to was there were a few people that had concerns that we were somehow not allowed to be off the grid or that we yeah. were putting electrical linemen in danger and we wanted to point out there was no danger at any time and we're totally allowed to do this. Mm -hmm. All we did was flip the main breaker on our house which disconnected our house from the grid. Okay, so we're gonna open up the service disconnect and turn off the main breaker which is gonna shut off all of the grid power to the entire house and then the power walls and solar are gonna take over for the next few days. I don't know if you can see this, but it just hit 11. <sighs> and since we have the power walls installed with the gateway, that automatically islands yeah. our house and keeps our solar system, our power walls, and our household, you know, everything in our house separated from the grid. So when that breaker is flipped, there's no way that Nothing. anything goes back. And we, we weren't cutting any wires or anything like that. People were wondering how we were allowed to do this. You flip a breaker. That's flip all. a breaker. It's yep. super easy. Uh, the most upvoted comment, if the panels were heated, it would be perfect. Agreed. True. Uh, we've been looking into some solutions for that. They do have yeah. some heat tape and some other things for melting snow off roof. But we need to see how much power they use. Because if they use too much power, it's yeah. going to offset any energy that you might generate. So it's not something you want to run all the time or cover your entire solar panels. But if we had something perhaps just along the gutter or along the front edge of the yeah. roof, that would be enough for the snow to melt and slide down and wouldn't take as much energy and might be something that we will be testing in the future. Uh, Sam says for $30,000 plus it had better work. I mean, it was more than $30,000, but, but... But it worked. It worked. Do not integrate the off-grid mode in the cars, but the wall boxes. The wall boxes can communicate the max amp based on SOC okay. and grid status. Oh, the high power wall connectors. Mm -hmm. That's talking about how if... We, we, we had a complaint about how if the power is out and we're trying to charge our cars that they could potentially drain the batteries. And yes, we said that, well, they could just have the cars check to see house is disconnected from the grid should they be charging. He had a suggestion to just build that functionality right in to the software. Yes, they could put some limitations on there, but the problem is, is the power walls don't know that it's a car trying to charge. Yeah. It could be you trying to use your oven or you're trying to use your electric dryer. Something There's no way load. for the, the, you know, or you're trying to use a welder. Who, you would probably wouldn't be doing that if the power was out, but basically by having the car, which is going to be the unit that's responsible for it, it would uh, make sure that it's not pulling any load. And you probably wouldn't be doing any of those other yeah. high usage things because they're not on timers. Brandon said, interesting video content. Thanks for posting. You're welcome. So somebody asked, would we ever be willing to do this again or try to go longer? Because we, we yeah. basically went like eight days over 200 hours. And I would say, I don't think we need to because we've proven we yeah. could live off the grid. This was, you know, charging two electric cars in the fall. Um, we could do it. I know during the summer we could live It'd be even better. Indefinitely. The, yeah. the thing is, is by being on the grid, as we mentioned before, we're able to send our excess power generated back to the grid and we earn credits which then we use later in the year and in the winter when we don't generate as much so while we could do it it would be costing us a lot more money if we did it in the in the summer months yep. and in the winter we don't yet have enough to cover all of our usage um somebody said how is the heating working is it coming from burning natural gas or electric heat pumps so our heat in our house is actually hot water heat so we have like baseboard hot water heat which uses natural gas. We have looked into getting an electric heat pump, but we have not made a decision on that yet. Yes. And again, there are ways you could have solar hot water. You can have uh, the water also heated by electricity, but that's not as efficient. Jason asks, how much would your setup last without charging cars? And what is your setup, solar, and how much power while usage? That's a good question. Basically, we could go probably in, totally indefinitely, indefinitely because as we stated, we have over 52 kilowatt hours worth of power, but we only use maybe 20 something per yeah. day if you don't have any cars charging. And some people can probably get by with 10. So just without any solar, you could probably go five days, you know, three to five days. But since we do have solar and the sun comes back up usually every day, you know, we do have sun and we do have sometimes when we have a few days without sun. Mm -hmm. uh, but in Colorado, over 300 sunny days a year, we could go indefinitely. Yeah. So our solar is 16 and a half kilowatts. And our power walls mount to about 52.3 kilowatt hours. Almost the same as like a standard range Model 3. 
Speaking of, some people were wondering when we talked about being able to back up the house with the cars and how that functionally isn't, isn't there yet. And with the recent announcement of the Cybertruck, people saw that, that has, it's going to have 240 and 120 yeah. volt outlets in it. And they're like, well, can we just use that to back up our house? No. At least not that we know of yet. Not yet. You, you can perhaps plug in some 240 volt appliances or 120, but we haven't heard anything about the inverters and how, you know, if those would be sufficient. Yeah. Also, you do have to have that like backup gateway so that it would turn off the power from the grid. If the power goes down, it keeps it shut off until it knows it to turn it back on. Yeah. So the Cybertruck on its own would not have all that. So, but if you have the gateway already and you have a Cybertruck and they enable vehicle to Maybe. home, it might be possible. Or if it's something for people who already have power walls, if they were able to add some sort of outlet or, or something to the power walls, it, it is a possibility. Question, the power, Tesla power walls generate no noise. Um, pretty much nothing. Sometimes you can hear a little hum from like a tiny fan in there, but nothing you can really hear. Just right now, our power walls are almost at 100%. They're finishing up, topping off with solar, and I can hear a very slight hum. I don't know if you can move, if you can hear it on the microphone, but just a very slight hum. And again, we can only hear that because we're like three feet away from them. Didn't know you can get power walls in different colors. That, that was a question we saw a few times. Basically, our power walls are red because these are from the Tesla referral program, which we earned back in 2017 or 2016. Mm -hmm. At, when you buy a power wall, they are going to be white and they'll just say Tesla on them. They don't have, you know, signatures on them. Other than that, they're exactly the same. It's only the, the metal cover on the outside that's different. So someone asked what the biggest draws of power inside the house are besides the cars. Probably like the stove. Yeah, we have a, an induction range that we use. Worked just fine. The, probably the second highest usage was Eric's computer because he's got some really beefy graphics card and stuff in there. But our actual water heater or our, our, uh, our boiler uses almost zero electricity because yeah. uh, it's all natural gas powered. The only electricity it uses is to open and close valves to for the different heating zones. And we don't actually have an air conditioning unit we went with an evaporative cooler, which uses a lot less electricity. And here in Colorado, where we don't really have humidity anyway, it actually works just as good, if not better, than an AC unit. Yeah, it can lower the temperature, you know, 20, 30 degrees. Easy. And it uses less than a tenth as much energy as a standard air conditioner. Yeah, so one thing to think of if you're in a drier climate is maybe an evaporative cooler is a better choice, especially if you're energy conscious. Another question that we had was how many power walls do I really need? Yeah. In our case, we have four power walls because we got them from the Tesla referral program and we have a lot of electric cars that we need to keep charged and to keep our household running. If you have a smaller household, you could probably get by with two power walls. Yeah. Two is the minimum number that you need in order to do a whole house backup, which will be able to ha handle all 120 volt outlets and all of the 240 volt outlets. If you just have one power wall, you can still back up essential appliances such as a refrigerator, yeah. your lights, uh, a few other th things like that, but you're not going to be able to run like an electric range or an electric dryer or you know, charge your car at a fast speed. You, you'd still be able to charge your car, but it's going to be a lot slower, a lot slower with only one power wall. Depending on the size of your house though and your usage, four might not even be enough. If you have a really large house and you have air conditioning and all that, you might need even more than four. And for those who are interested in a full house backup, you can get by with a bare minimum of two and there's special devices they can apply to your air conditioners mm -hmm. so that they will start up slowly so they don't pull a huge draw and that allows the power walls to go ahead and handle those. So Tony says, I thought Tesla's Powerwall system was grid-tied only. Is that not the case? In our case, well, normally it is grid-tied. We did do this test showing that we were not connected or not receiving power from the grid. But Powerwalls actually can be used totally off-grid, yeah. but the warranty is not as long. Because basically Tesla warranties it for like 10 years of grid tied usage if you do not have it tied to the grid it's, it's a shorter warranty it's a certain number of like kilowatt hours yeah. that are transferred another thing too is we do have our power walls all connected to the internet via three different ways via cellular network which is like a backup via ethernet and also via wi-fi <laughs> if you're off grid and you're out in the middle of nowhere and you don't have internet then that's another way yeah. that tesla won't provide that full 10-year warranty because they can't communicate with the power wall to send it the latest software updates and keep it running and running efficiently so someone is asking, are there optimizers with your inverters? 
In our case, we don't have any optimizers. We don't have any shade on our roof, no. really. So there's no need for those optimizers. We just have the three delta inverters. For other people who have a little more shade, if there's trees nearby or other houses, then they might have optimizers which allow the panels to work kind of independently. And yeah. if one panel's in the shade, other ones can still generate the full power. In our case, we have, I think, nine different strings connected to our inverters. So Ash says, always great stuff, guys. Thank you very much. How many more power walls can you accommodate to max out the sun's daily solar emittance versus the area on your solar and roof area? Well, I mean, we could probably fill a couple more. Oh, no, we, we could fill a lot more. In the summer, yeah. we could probably fill, uh, let me see. We, could, we, got, we Probably could, 10? We could do about, probably almost 10 yeah. in the summer. Uh, we've got a lot of solar. Yeah, and kind of on that note, we still have some roof space available without solar, and we're actually going through the process to add solar onto that roof space also to maximize what we can pull from the sun's emittance every day. Okay, well that's pretty much it for this one. If you have any other solar related questions, whether it be the solar system, the power walls, how it integrates with the car chargers, definitely leave it down below. I'll be answering some questions. David will jump on and answer some questions and maybe we'll use some other questions for our next Q&A. As always, huge thanks to our channel sponsor, Abstract Ocean. If you guys are looking to accessorize a Model SX or Model 3, definitely check them out. And using code Tesla Inventory will get you 15% off your first purchase. As always though, thumbs up if you enjoyed that video. Go and click here to subscribe here for some other ones. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.